Okay, so looking at graphs of the quadratic functions, um, we're going to use Desmos, we're going to use the discriminant. We're just looking at basically where the axis of symmetry is, where the intercepts are, and things like that. Um, when we're looking at these first ones, so it says use Desmos to graph the following, then find the discriminant. What does the discriminant of the related functions tell us about the graphs? So if we had... Um, this first one, so we've got b squared minus 4ac is going to be 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3, which is 16 minus 12, which is 4. I'm going to just keep going here. So we know in that first one, we've got two um, different roots. This one's 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4, which is 0. So we have either two identical roots or one real root for that one. And then here, we've got b squared minus 4ac. So that's 4 times 1 times 5, which is going to be negative 4. So looking at those three, we can tell that the first one's got two real roots, the second one's got one or two identical roots, and the third one has no real roots. We should also know that that third one is above the axis because it's a positive graph, it's opening up, meaning that the only way for it to not have two real roots is that it's above the axis. Now if we look at those three graphs, um, the first graph is there, we've got our two real roots. Um, we can look at the point of right there. The second graph, we've got one root or two identical roots. And then the final graph, we can only see the y-intercept because it is above the graph. So back to our note here, the discriminant is going to tell us the number of roots. And we can actually find out whether the graph is above or below based on the a value. If the a value is positive, um, and we have a negative discriminant, we know it's above the x-axis. If it's negative, we would know it's below. So it tells us really, though, the number of roots. Or zeros. Okay, so we should always be able to find from a parabola. So the graph of a quadratic is a parabola. And from that, you should always be able to find the axis of symmetry... the max or min value and when it occurs um, and the x and y intercepts x intercepts y intercept and there are sometimes two so that's an s all right so let's look at this first example here now you'll notice at the bottom i've actually put those graphs in um, those are a little bit harder than the first one so let's do the first one together um, we have x minus 2 squared minus 1. So we're going to go 2 to the right, down 1. And now I'm just going to graph a quadratic from there because we don't have any a value. So it's just going to look something like that. There we go. Make that one that one and that one nice and big and i'm going to put my dotted line right there just to start so our axis of symmetry from the vertex is going to be x equals two our maximum or minimum value it's a minimum and it's negative one and it occurs when x equals two it always happens at the axis of symmetry our x intercepts here are one and three and our y-intercept is happening at 3. Okay, and that's all just from the graph there. Now, these next ones are specifically chosen because they're a little bit tougher. Um, using Desmos makes it way easier for us. Just getting used to using some graphing software. In the future, we'll probably be using graphing calculators for this. But for now, using Desmos is fine. You need to understand that when you graph one of these, you can click on one of the axes and it'll show all of these points. Then you can actually just click on all the points. Remember, the axis of symmetry is always from our vertex. It's always the x value of our vertex. Our max or min value is the y value of the vertex, and it happens when the x value of the vertex is happening. 
And then the intercepts are just the intercepts. So looking at this next question, it says graph the functions x squared minus 6x plus 4 and 2x squared plus 11x plus 8. I'm going to do them in two different ways. The first one, I'm going to complete the square just because that puts it in vertex form. So we're going to have x squared minus 6x. That's going to be plus 9 plus 4 minus 9. So we're going to get x minus 3 squared minus 5. So we've just changed the form there to vertex form by completing the square. Okay, so we can go over 3, down 5. And then we can get all of our points here. And what you're going to notice is, and I'll even do the next one, it's going to be here and here. And now I'll connect all my dots, make it nice and pretty. What we've noticed is that our intercepts are actually, well, our y-intercepts nice and easy. Our x-intercepts are a little bit harder to see here just based on the form. Um, we'd actually have to solve for those. So our y-intercepts, nice and easy. Our axis of symmetry here is at x equals 3. Our vertex is 3 and negative 5. Our roots, now I'm not going to go into them. Let's call them, looks like 0.9 and 5.1. Okay, you can use the quadratic formula to actually find out what those numbers are. I'm not going to do it. This is more that you should just be able to see it and recognize them. And our y-intercepts happening at y equals 4. Now for this next graph, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to graph it using our roots. So I'm looking at this and noticing that completing the square is probably not going to be a nice number. Just because we have a 2 in front of our x squared and then an 11 in the middle. But what I can do is I can actually factor this. So we're going to get 2x, uh, what is it, 2x plus 1. And then x plus 8. Oh, no, that's not right. What do we got? Oh, can we factor this? So 2x plus... Uh, well, we can't factor this, can we? 2x plus 2 would be a 4, 8. Nope. All right, so I guess we won't do that, we will graph this by completing the square. It's going to be 5.5x. Um, let's do this all in one step. So plus 5.5 squared plus 8 minus 5.5 squared equals, we've got our 2x minus, oh, that's not even 5.5 squared, it's 2.75. This is going to be 2.75 out here as well. Sorry for that mistake there. And then this is going to be minus 2.75. And then this is going to be not a pretty number. We've got 8 minus 2.75 squared. So we can do 8 minus 2.75 squared. Oh, not 27. 2.75 squared. Oh, Mr. Shaw. 7, 5 squared. There we go. 0 0.4375. 0 0.4375. It's all squared. That is going to be in red. It's not going to be a pretty graph. Um, we're at right around here. It's going to be going up. So it's going to be something like this. Go back to our original equation to find our x intercept or our y intercept goes through there. So our y intercept is 8. From this original equation, we make x equal to 0. Both of those terms go away. Our roots, we don't have any. 
our vertex is 2.75 and this disaster that I just created. And our axis of symmetry is x equals 2.75. All right, sorry about that. Um, and then if we're looking at factored form, this is kind of why I was thinking that we could do that, because knowing that factored form, we can actually find our axis of symmetry just by adding our two roots together. So if we could factor this, we would get, um, this is just our general form, x minus t, x minus s. So that means our two roots are t and s. So if we were looking at that, our axis of symmetry here, so axis of symmetry, which is just your x value of your vertex, would be t plus s divided by 2. It's just halfway between your two roots. It's a symmetrical fun function, so it has to be there. Um, the x-intercepts of a graph of a quadratic of y equals f at x tells us the roots when f at x equals 0. So if we had y equals this, then it's going to be at negative 2 and 5. Okay, the related quadratic equation would be x plus 2 x minus 5 equals 0. So that's just showing us the two roots. Okay, so halfway between those two, we could find our axis of symmetry. There is a worksheet.